Hey guys, I just wanted to preface this video um, and say I know that it's a long video, but I hope you stick around to the end because I'm going to throw a couple of bloopers in at the end. And also, I wanted to remind you that the giveaway is over today, uh, tonight at midnight. And so I'll start collecting all the names and we will try to do um, a video on the drawing this weekend. And uh, if you guys remember, you have uh, 48 hours to to answer when I post your handle at the bottom and to send me an email and if, if that doesn't happen we'll have to choose somebody else uh, but if you send me an email we'll work with you you get to choose two of the Goodview Woodworks pigments and um, and then uh, we'll get back to you and hopefully you'll get a nice uh, new kit of, of casting epoxy so without further ado let's get on to the video <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the Goodview Woodworks channel. My name is Nathan, and in this video, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. I'm gonna be making a shift knob for my truck. So if you guys remember my original intro, which is me and my Ranger with Roxy driving around, that truck broke down, so I got a different truck. Well, my new truck has this really dumb bullet shifter knob. It's, it's terrible. It rattles, makes a bunch of noise, and it looks pretty stupid too. And um, so, we're gonna be making a new shift knob for that using some epoxy, some Incredible Solutions casting epoxy, and our Goodview Woodworks pigments. And we have four pigments here. What does that say? Avocado, caviar, Maui, sparkle additive, tamarind, reef, Caribbean, and macaw. Macaw is a really cool one because it's a color shift and it shifts from blue to pink. Um, and so, uh, Justin, if you remember him from the other video, he actually suggested we do like a galaxy style, and that's what we're going for. And he has experience doing that, so he's gonna be teaching me how to do the galaxy pour. So, from what I understand, we're gonna mix the epoxy first, pour them out in the different cups, we'll let them sit overnight to thicken up. So that way, when we pour them all together, they don't combine all the way. We'll do a little bit of swirls, and you'll have what you call a galaxy. So. Let's get started. We're gonna be using the caviar first, uh, a little bit of this pigment. Uh, caviar is pretty much black. And when we mix the epoxy, we'll be just using just a little bit of that to just tint the epoxy so it's translucent and uh, we can be able to see through it a little bit. So let's do that. All right, once again, we'll be mixing 24 ounces of epoxy and we're gonna do eight ounces of the hardener 16 ounces of the epoxy. Now I always start with the hardener first. If you ever watch any of my videos, I always start with the hardener because it's thinner. That way when you pour, if you were to do it the other way, the hardener would be sitting on top and it makes it a little bit harder to mix. So go ahead and pour. Eight ounces of hardener. <clears throat> Childproof. It's childproof. And we will pour 16. Ounces of epoxy. There we go. Now it's time to mix. Mix. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're just gonna remember, we always wanna mix on slow setting that we don't wanna splash up. So, here we go. And grab a hold of the cup too. I've had one come out of my hand before. All right, we're gonna mix for three minutes. We're gonna mix for three minutes, scraping the bottom and the sides to make sure we get all the unmixed epoxy mixed together, and then we'll be ready to pour. All right, now that we have all of our epoxy mixed into our mixing cup, we're gonna divide them into eight different cups. I'm just gonna eyeball it, really. Um, we can always try to get them perfect, but then we'll individually mix each color in there. So let's do that. Okay. 
Okay, so well, I did them in seven, so. <laughs> See, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. See, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <clears throat> All right, we'll start with our caviar. Don't make, I'll make sure I open it the right way. See that? Just gonna take. Avocado. Thank you. I got a little bit of black in that one. Doesn't matter. And we're gonna want more pigment in this so that it we get the green we're looking for. Okay, this is the cool one, Macaw. <laughs> this is the one that shines different colors, it's real pretty. Macaw! Isn't that a bird? Yeah, it's a, like a parrot thing. Next one is tamarind. As a matter of fact, I think this one also is a color flip. It goes from like reddish to gold. If it doesn't, it does kind of look like it does. I forgot about this one though. I think tamarind is a color flip, we'll see. That's cross red. <laughs> Dang. Okay. Reef is the next one. Oh, that's a pretty color purple, isn't it? Man. Next one is Maui. Look at that blue. That's really pretty too. You like that blue? Yeah, it's nice. I'm waiting for the sparkles. Oh yeah, this, this, me too, the sparkle additive. Sparkle additives. My hands. Good thing your wife's here. She might question what you were doing after work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the next color is uh, Caribbean, or if you're watching the movie, parts of the Caribbean. <laughs> Tomato, potato. Mm -hmm. Those are close. This one is super light colored, but it's also very pretty. All right, here's the really cool one, the sparkle additive. Super shiny. Yeah, that's dope. Super bling. How much should I put in there? It's up to you. 
this will be the, like the stars. Oh, there you go. You will. Look at that. That's that's gonna be that's gonna be cool. Do you think I need more? Um, what do you think? Never hurts. Never hurts. We got one extra knife. Good. Yeah, sure. Cool. Because usually I just use a just a straight silver flake, and this is like a like a ice pearl flake. Yeah. It's gonna be so cool. I'm not sure if it's gonna change the color at all or not. All right. Let's start. Let's start with that one. See what it looks like. Super sparkly. All right, here we go with the Caribbean. It's a cool looking blue. It's like really light, mm -hmm. but, but like in the swirls, it gets darker. This blue with this blue would look really good in like a, a river table. Oh yeah, like mix the two together. Mm -hmm. Pour the dark and then the run the, the light through the middle and swirl it. Nice. That one was Maui. It's like a little deeper. Almost like a royal kind of blue. Alright, we'll go with the reef. The purple. Oh, that's real pretty. Notice, guys, I'm scraping the sides and the bottom to make sure all those pigments are fully mixed. Man, when I'm looking through the camera at these colors, you can't, it's not the same as with your eyes. It looks so less vivid. Yeah on the camera than it does in person. All right, let's do the green. Which one was the green? It was the avocado. Here's the avocado. That's a real pretty green. That's actually really nice. Yeah. I don't think it deserves to be called avocado. Either. I know, that's kind that's of a terrible like name, a but better. yeah, it's I'll much prettier than an avocado. I may rename it. <laughs> All right, and this one is the um, tamarind. The tamarind's like a monkey, isn't it? You, you got me. All right, and this one I think is a color flip. Yeah, it is a color flip. So this one's gonna go from like a gold to red color. It's real pretty. Can you guys see the different colors in there? Leave a comment down in the description if you can see the colors and what colors you would like to see that we're not using. Super pretty. I like that one a lot. Oh yes, this one. Alright. Here's the other. Let's do black before we do, do that one. one last. Yeah. Alright, so here's the black. This one's not gonna be have a lot of pigment in it. because we want to be able to see through it. See, we can kind of see through it on the knife. It's not going to be super vivid. It's what we call caviar. So it's not black if you look for it. It's called caviar. That's a cool color too, even though it's just kind of plain. No, oh, that's, that's a good color. Yeah. All right, and for one of the dopest ones on here is macaw. This is a color flip from blue to purple. I guess in every color in between, really. That's almost like a galaxy all in itself. Yeah, it kind of is. Yeah, so I can see blue, orange, pink. That's a really cool color. Mm -hmm. 
you can see the color change. There's some more pigments mixing. Sweet. <clears throat> All right, guys, so what we're going to do is we're going to let these sit overnight. Um, we're, we don't have to worry about them hardening up because this is a deep pour epoxy. It's made to be poured two inches thick, and it sets in like three days. So overnight, though, it will get real thick like honey. And at that point, when we mix them into our mold right here, um, they won't actually mix together. You'll see the, the clumps of different, not like clumps, but like smooth transitions between each color. And that's what we're going for, like a galaxy. So um, also, I wanted to show you this. This is also a stoner urethane mold release, and we're gonna be using this, and we're gonna spray into our PVC mold, uh, so that way, a little bit of air pressure, and it can pop right out. Okay, but we'll be back after when we get ready to pour these. All right, guys, it's the next morning, and um, I'm gonna show you the epoxy. It's really thick, almost like honey, and that's where we wanna be. So, see this? It almost moves the cup, it's super thick. That's where we want it. Um, it's been about 12 hours or so, I guess. And so we're gonna go ahead and take our mold release and spray it into our mold. All right, per the instructions, it says to hold about a foot away from the mold and apply a thin layer. All right, hopefully that works. Let's go ahead and start pouring. how thick it is mm. sucker is pretty thick well yeah because I let it sit on purpose I like that color this is one of the flips the color flips the reason why I do it thick like that is so it doesn't just combine you know what I mean This is a cool color too. I really like that. I'm not a purple fan, but that one's pretty sweet looking color. This screen just automatically cuts off after a while. Yeah, but you can, if you just tap the screen, it'll come back. This is another color flip. It goes from um, like red to gold. Ice pearl almost. And that 
going to stir with this one. So we're not going to do a lot of stirring. I'm going to just swirl it just a little bit. There we go. That's it. I'm going to leave it just like that. All right. <laughs> Hopefully that works. <laughs> Maybe I should have put the black all around, but I was hoping it would sink down into the black. So we'll see. All right. So this thing is, you know, almost cured all the way. I can press on my finger. It's hard, but the fingernail, I can still gouge it with the fingernail. So it's not completely done, but we're going to pop it out of the mold. Hopefully it looks legit. <laughs> Hopefully it works popping it out of the mold. Nope. Yeah, usually that mold released, if it, if it did as it's supposed to, um, you just do like a couple taps. It's loosened. It's just not moving. That's glued in there, ain't it? No. Oh, it's not? No. For this, just this occasion, you want to be able to pop it out. Yeah, released off that pretty easy. Yeah, that's about it. Oh, yeah, there you go. Noise. Noise. Wow, check out the, uh, the, what do you call it? The sparkle ad additives. The sparkle additive, yeah. It's all slick and greasy from, from the mold release. Mm -hmm. So I wonder what the center looks like. Yeah, I don't know. It's really cool looking. So the color did get all the way to the bottom. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Well, it's going to be my shifter knob. That's what it's going to be. All right. All we have to do is pop that on the lathe now and turn her down into my shift knob. I think it's going to look legit. All right. So now that we have our blank out of the mold, now we're going to start prepping it to be uh, turned into a shifter knob. And in order to do that, we have to drill a hole. But the way that we're going to do it, and the way that Justin has suggested to do it, because he turns a lot of shifter knobs, is we are going to drill a hole into it and, and thread in the correct threads. So, see here, he's got a bolt, and he has his threaded insert on the top of the bolt already screwed on. And this insert, when he screws it into the blank, will be left over in the blank, after he finishes. So once he screws that insert into the blank, um, it will be ready to mount on the lathe and he'll use those threads to hold it on the lathe so he can turn it down. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> Use some two-part epoxy. This is always a JB. This is JB weld, clear weld. I mean, you can use Gorilla Glue. Uh, there's all types of stuff. Um, I normally use uh, Gorilla Glue, but JB weld works for me as well. This yeah. sets up in five minutes, but 24 hours full, full cure, right? Yeah, because it just still be soft after five minutes. So that's why I don't turn it immediately because I don't want to take a chance at the insert twisting inside and then it losing all its grip. Oops, sorry. So I put a little bit inside here just to kind of help grease it up a little bit. Because um, putting these threads inside this epoxy, it's actually kind of a pain in the butt. This stuff doesn't have any give like wood. Pretty much you're just lubing the hole a little bit so it's yeah. easier for that threaded insert yeah. to go in there. I put a little bit, yeah. Put a little bit on the insert like that, you know. Oh, okay. Spread it like butter. Noise. And the insert that I'm using is a time cert 10 by 1.5. Uh, we'll link that down in the description so you guys can see. Same thing with the JB plastic weld. Yeah. These are usually used for like replacing uh, head studs in a motor. Oh, okay. Kind of like helicoil? Yeah. These are like the super helicoil and 
I'm just kind of start here. And just like that. It's not perfect in there, is it? It's in there. Oh, it's in there. Not as centered as I would like. That's okay. That's the point. Of it. All right, well, we got to turn down to uh, a cylinder that's not wobbly. <laughs> so now we just got to turn the shape out of it. Oh, it does look kind of sweet, though. Still got to get down mm -hmm. here a little bit. Looking awesome. Nice. Unpause. Nice. It's time for sanding, right? Yep. Yes. That's girthy. That's nice. Yeah, I like it. I, I like Actually, it. you want to put your fingers on her? Yeah. Yeah, I like I like that. I used to drive like you know like a big. I used to drive like a big truck, mm -hmm. and but it was a fat shit. It was like this fat, and but it was like kind of curved. Yeah. So, but yeah, no, this is this is cool. Yeah, it's gonna look crazy when it's. Yeah, on. look, see, look at the green right in there. It's got some really cool colors. Yeah, and you can see the sparkle and stuff in there too, which is oh, yeah, nice. You wait until it's all polished up. It's gonna yeah. be nice. Noise! All right, now to the fun part. Starting to make it look pretty. All right, so 
<clears throat> now that we're finished turning the shifter knob, we're gonna start sanding it down. And we have to sand it in steps, obviously, because essentially the goal here is to make the big scratches smaller scratches. So what we're starting out with is he's using uh, 120 sandpaper, and then we're gonna go to 220, and then 320, and then what, 500? About 400. Oh, 400. And start wet sanding at 500, 800, 1,000, and then go to a buffing wheel. Yeah, so a lot of steps, but um, I'll make sure I'll post it on the screen so you can see the numbers and link it in the description so you guys can do the same thing. But from what I hear, once you hit 800, you could probably buff everything from there. Technically, you can buff all the scratches out with the buffing wheel from 800. I just like to do 1,000 just because it, you know, makes it shinier in my makes, opinion. It, okay. It may not, but it makes me feel better. Makes you feel better. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that's what we're going to do. So let's get it. Also, as far as on my lathe goes, when you, wanna, when you start sanding, drop it down to your lowest setting. It may seem like it goes faster when you take it up to the full speed, but you really get it sands better at a low speed. Okay. So, so it doesn't like overheat and gum up your paper and crap like that? That, and honestly, like, I don't, I don't know why. It just, it, it, it sands better at, at lower RPM. Okay, cool. You're the pro. I don't know about that. All right, now it's time for my favorite part of sanding, which is wet sanding. You actually, because the water will fill in all the small scratches, you'll start to see what this shifter knob is gonna look like. It's gonna look so sweet. You can already kind of see all the colors. Now it's kind of hard to see, but we have some really cool colors on there. Look at that. Dang. Oh, that's so cool. Dang, Bobby. Sorry. Can't take you nowhere. I oh, know. Oh, dude, that's crazy. What? Just. All right, so he's sanding with, what is that, 600? So 600, so we're going to do 1,000, which will look very similar to this, and then we'll get to polishing. So I'll catch you when we get done polishing it. I'll catch you when we start polishing it. What are you, what are you using there? I can't remember what this guy's called, like rouge or something. Get this kit off eBay or Amazon or whatever. It's a four-piece polishing compound. This would be uh, Triple E. Okay, Triple E. This is uh, Triple E, and I, I just use the brown Triple E and the white diamond. There's no need to get into this unless you're doing, because this is mainly for metals, but it works great for epoxy. Okay, cool. Like plastic stuff. Yeah, plastic, yep. And then in this, you turn it up a little, a little higher, about three-quarter of the way up give or take load the wheel and then go to town Go slower. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it looks sweet. Nice. It's 
because they're brown. I did see some of <laughs> them. Yeah. yeah, that's why. Wait, wait till you see the, the white. Mm -hmm. Guys, thanks for watching. I uh, appreciate you sticking around to the end. If you would, please hit the subscribe button. Also, hit that like button and uh, share this video if you did enjoy it. Please leave a comment down below the description if you have any questions. And as always, guys, thanks for hanging out with us. Pigments and glitter and stuff like that is craft herpes. Can't get it off once it's on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're recording. Bob. <laughs> 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 <laughs>